Here we go. Ready? Yeah, I was born ready. <laughs> this is gonna be good, this is gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so now, let me, I, I actually didn't read these yet, so let me read through these. Best way to stay updated and adapt to new technologies. Well, first off, I think it's important to realize that you don't have to uh, stay updated and adapt to all technologies that come out. There are lots of technologies that come out. There are always new things, new innovations. You might be one of the people who's creating these really cool new things. And so uh, I, I think it's important just to recognize you don't have to learn about every single thing that comes up. And that's actually one of the pieces of advice that I'd give just generally is um, make a list of the things that you will want to get into, but also the list of the things that you just decided you're not going to get into. But once you've decided what you do want to get into, then I think some of the, the most useful things that I've found is, yeah, sure, like follow tutorial here and there, reference those things. Um, but it really just comes down to actually building something with it. And so, um, so I, I recommend cloning something that already exists if you don't just have an idea of your own, because that, that allows you to just kind of shove off on some of those um, product decisions and you just do what they did. And, and then you can focus on the specific thing you're trying to learn. Uh, and also like try to isolate it as much as possible, uh, especially like a new thing. Try to build the super simple version of whatever it is you're trying to build. And, and that will help you get an idea of where to draw the lines around these abstractions that you're trying to learn. Whew. So what's great about being a dev? I, I really love that I can find a problem, like a digital problem, a problem in the digital world, and sometimes even in the physical world, but uh, and find some way to solve it with technology, uh, with automating through automation software, like writing some software to solve a problem. Uh, like I have a collection of audio books and, and I've written some software to, sometimes you'll get these CDs that have like every single chapter in its own uh, track. And I like to, uh, I built a little script that I could just scrunch all those together and set the ID3 tags correct so that it would show up right in my podcast player and stuff. It's just really cool that I have the ability to do that. Uh, that's one of the things I love about being a software developer. Now, one of the worst things uh, is sometimes those problems are not really easily solvable <laughs> by software. So that's unfortunate. Um, and you know, some, sometimes um, we can, as like software developers, we feel like um, all problems are like just logical problems. And I sometimes, or I've, I've had to learn that not all problems can be solved logically and sometimes it's an emotional problem. And uh, especially when we're talking about relationships and things, um, finding that shift between the logical problem solving that I do uh, in my day job and the emotional uh, problem solving that I do in the things that really matter, my relationships as a father and a husband, um, that's a challenge. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's maybe not the best part about being a dev. <laughs> Yeah, so the strengths for a developer, most important thing. Um, my father-in-law likes to say, hey, Kent, and, and he says this to everybody, but hey, Kent, um, is it more important to be smart or a hard worker? And he says, it's more important to be a hard worker. Is it more important to be a hard worker or to be nice and, or kind? And I, he always says, it's more important to be not nice and kind. And um, I, I totally agree with that line of thinking. Um, it doesn't matter how great a developer you are, if you are not a, a nice person, if you're not a kind person, somebody that other developers want to be around, then you're going to have a hard time uh, accomplishing your goals, uh, furthering whatever mission is it is that you have. Um, and so, yeah, wh whatever it is that you do, just make sure that you're kind when you do it. And uh, I think that's a really important skill to have as a developer. Oh boy, yeah, I've made mistakes. <laughs> I've made plenty of mistakes uh, uh, during my career. Um, so, I, I mean, I can think about technical mistakes where <laughs> probably one of my favorite is when I was uh, still an intern and, and I was working at Domo and we had this chat feature and um, we found a cross-site scripting vulnerability. It wasn't using React, so that wasn't like automatically taken care of for us. Uh, it was using, uh, we were using Backbone. And so you could do a little chat that was like script tag, alert, hello world, or whatever. And um, anytime that was rendered on anyone's machine, because this is a chat, so it shows up for everybody. Anytime it was rendered, it would alert 
um, you know, whatever. And so I got this bug and um, I needed to reproduce it to make sure that the bug existed. And so I understood it and I could find the code that was running it. And I, uh, at Domo, we have a like Domo enterprise instance for all of our employees and that's how we communicate and everything. And so I just reproduced it with that and my reproduction was um, an alert that popped up that said, you've been hacked. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> and so, so I just, um, everybody in the company, anytime they changed navigation or went to any page in the app, it would pop up, you've been hacked for like an hour because we hadn't implemented comment delete yet. <laughs> and so that was, yeah, that was a mistake. Um, and so I, I was like rushing around asking somebody, please, please, like somebody delete that from the database. Uh, we finally did fix that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, you learned some things through the school of hard knocks and everybody just laughed at me. You know, I was, just, I was the intern, made the mistake. It was like very stereotypical um, situation. Uh, luckily I didn't do that for like a customer. That would have been worse. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I've made plenty of like those sorts of technical mistakes. I, I've made technical decisions that um, did not pan out. And I, to, you know, uh, I, I said, okay, everybody, let's migrate over to this testing framework. Oh, never mind. Let's do this one instead. And used up a lot of my um, um, you know developer capital or whatever. Um, and uh, and yeah, overcoming that just became a, a matter of developing trust and, and really communicating with people about what their pain points were and, and finding ways to solve those, uh, those pain points. Uh, and then uh, some uh, relational uh, as well. So probably the biggest mistake I made um, was getting too involved in open source and, or too excited about my side projects and um, neglecting um, the side project that matters the most, which is your relationships. And um, that um, I, I was able to course correct that by communicating um, with the people who matter most in my life, my, my family. And, uh, and then also I, I volunteered to go to too many com conferences one year and my boss said, hey, you're out of the office every like one in five days for conferences and your team has to pull up the slack. Now we're happy to have you go to conferences, but maybe like ease back a little bit. And I got really mad about that. Um, I even tweeted about my, my frustration and uh, yeah, I got my hand slapped for that for sure. Um, and that was definitely a mistake. I should not have done that. It was a very like pity party Kent uh, point of my life. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you make those mistakes and you do the next right thing uh, that you make the most of, of the future and then you just move on. Yeah, so the proudest moment in my career, I, I have, I mean like, the the very one of the very first projects that I ever did. I was still an intern, and they're actually still using the software that I wrote still today. Um, I, I like remember writing in a Word document, documenting the whole thing and everything, and they were really impressed, and that just was really validating. They're still using that years years later. And um, at Pay PayPal, I built PayPal scripts. Every new project at PayPal uh, now uses PayPal scripts still uh, after years of me being gone. And, uh, and I built their component library that they're still using. So like the things that I have created and people are still using, um, that's really validating. That's, that's what makes me feel good inside. Um, but of all the things that I've created that I'm most proud about, it's epicreact.dev. It is the biggest thing that I've ever done. And the feedback that I've gotten from it, people have been getting pay raises, getting their first job, um, and just in general, becoming more productive, even after having years of experience in React because of what they've learned from Epic React. So I'd say of all things, epicreact.dev is um, my proudest creation. Thousands of developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.